Hello and a warm welcome to Wembley for the 2022 Hub Cup Final today. This is an event that started in the summer with regional heats, seven aside those games were, and the best teams progressed to a playoff round, 11 aside, at the Etihad campus, Manchester City, later on in the summer. Eventually, we are down to the final four. Two men's teams and two women's teams that will contest the finals here at the National Stadium. It'll be the men first, the Bulls head from Pratt Bottom in Kent, up against the Wishing Well from Lostock Hall outside Preston in Lancashire. In true Cup Final Day tradition, here's how those two teams got this far. This is what football is, this is what it's all about, you know, this is where a lot of the young kids, they start and then they, they go into, so this is, uh, this is football at its, at its purest in a way, they just do it for the love of the game. The standard is, has just ramped up massively, they definitely want to win, have been uh, really competitive, um, but it's also got a big level of skill to it, you can see you've got on the sideline, you've got coaches and managers who are... Uh, working on things they've worked on in training. We all started playing like this, you know, teams like this, all of us, everybody, all, all the guys I know that made it to the level that we did, we all started in, in teams like this. Football is, is everybody's game, that's the beautiful thing about it. And it's obviously with Wembley at stake here in the finals, it's, uh, it's a lot to play for. very shortly here at Wembley, the Bulls Head and the Wishing Well, but look who I've got alongside me for a chat. Two people who've <laughs> graced this Wembley pitch more than once in Farrah Williams and Steve Sidwell. Afternoon to you both. In fact, it's nearly afternoon. Um, Farrah, big day for these two teams. Nerves, I would think. Yeah, it's a massive day. I think it's a massive occasion for any football fan to get the opportunity that Wembley is a dream come true. And, you know, the lads out here from both teams are excited. You can see that there'll definitely be some nerves in there. Um, hopefully, for my team, the Wishing Wells, they don't play a part in terms of the energy they have for the 90 minutes. Yeah, you've seen a little bit of your yes. team, haven't you? Yeah. The Bulls head, yes. um, and you, you like some of what you've seen, I think. Yeah, quite yeah, impressed. Well, yeah, covered them at Crystal Palace in the uh, in the group stages, uh, the training ground, and individuals very good. Right. Collectively, I think that's where it's going to be a bit of a, a, a team performance yeah. today. I think the Wishing Well, they they play as a team. They're a team every week. Whereas I think the Bulls head, they play for different teams that come together every now and again. Don't be making excuses already for no, your no, team. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. But just going back to the nerves. I mean, I was upstairs yeah. earlier on this morning when the Wishing Well turn up, and they've come down. From impressed and a lot of them never been to Wembley before Matt. Wow. so they had the phones out it was like a, a real sort of taking moment it's, it's moments where we've played here I've come here many times for cup finals and semi-finals and it's, it's refreshing to see that you yeah take it for granted. when you come here so many times and you see someone that comes here for the first time adults brought their kids their families and it was, it's going to be a great day out for them as well and you were saying Farah even when you've been here with with England and other other teams some players are lively pre-match some like a bit of peace and quiet yeah, well, I was, a, I was a quiet player. I wasn't somebody that had the music blaring. But, you know, I went into both change rooms and, and the wishing worlds, they were calm. They looked very focused. Um, they're definitely excited. I spoke to some of them. There's, there's definitely nerves there. But as I, as I mentioned, playing at Wembley is a dream come true for them. They've mentioned they've had to travel down half of the squad, more than half of the squad, 4 a.m. from Preston. Ooh. So there's a little bit of a disadvantage there. No excuses, Steve. Come on, Bullshit. <laughs> Honestly, the pair of them. <laughs> but they have 300 travelling fans. Okay. So they had... They had a, the travelling fans had a cancelled train at 8am this morning, had to get on the next train, so they're just slowly coming in into the yeah. stadium, but I'm sure there'll be a, um, 300 of them up there in the stand, and they've got a big flag, so they'll be definitely noticed, and yeah. they'll be heard. <laughs> well, listen, as you've heard, these two have been into the dressing rooms for a little bit of a, a team talk, a little bit of a sense of how those nerves are, so let's find out how they got inside. 
so I'm here with the management staff. Uh, you're at Wembley. It's the final. How are you feeling? How's the emotions running through uh, yourself and the players? Yeah, no, we've been excited for months, um, obviously, since we qualified and that. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Obviously, there's a lot of banter uh, going about, but we're really looking forward to the day. BT are putting on a great um, show, and, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it today. So it's the ball's head. It's, uh, tell us a little bit about the team and, and individuals. It's a team collective, so it's been a long journey. We started off in Crystal Palace, yes. then Manchester, and now we're here. I want to thank Jamie for putting this all together and for the chairman who's floating around somewhere with the players. And we've come together to put on a show and hopefully get the W. Um, it's kind of made a little bit more, uh, it means a lot more with our friend Jordan who played at Crystal Palace but unfortunately passed away. So we'll try and get the victory for him and that's why we're here today. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it, definitely. And Jamie, you was playing at Crystal Palace. You're on the other side of the white line now. How's it going to make you feel? Are you going to have itchy feet trying to get on there? Nah, to be fair, obviously, I, I know the boys are going to get the job done, hopefully, today. Um, I'm confident that they will get the job done. Um, the ball's head has been represented by many of the players and all of us today. Joe's actually in the squad today, yeah. uh, the li licensee. So, yeah, it, we're representing the ball's pub, and obviously, um, we want to get a W um, and um, represent um, the BT and how well we've done. I'll be part of your team as well, so hopefully we can get it done for yourselves and for Jordan. It'll be a lovely touch if we can do. Best of luck today. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Jordan Dashty. What does it feel like for yourself and the team to be playing at Wembley today? Oh, it's amazing for just a bunch of normal lads make it down and obviously get the Wembley treatment and play on the pitch. So, yeah, amazing. Amazing. Tell us a little bit about your team, players to look out for, what you're expecting from each other today. Um, well, we're a very good team. Um, I'm star man, obviously. I'm very modest about that. Um, I scored the goal of the tournament in the last round to get us here. Um, but, it, but we work together as a team. We've, we dig deep for each other. Um, we're here every Sunday fighting for the Sunday League. We're doing well in, in the local league, but this is next level. So, yeah, we want to win today. Loving the confidence and the fact that you mentioned your 40-yard chip. Um, it's already up for goal of the tournament, so tell me a little bit about that and the feeling that you got after scoring it. Um, well, I gave a penalty away just two minutes before that, so I thought I'd, I'd better make it up for it. It bounced well, and because we were on uh, artificial grass, there was no bobbles, so yeah, put it in the top corner, and the rest is history. Good luck for today. Thank you. Well, the teams and the officials, as you can perhaps see, are just coming out uh, behind us. They will. Uh, guys, be a period of silence and remembrance before the match for the Bulls heads goalkeeper Jordan yeah. Matora, who yeah. very sadly was lost in yeah. September unexpectedly. Steve. So perhaps mixed feelings from the Bulls head side. Yeah, I mean he was there at Crystal Palace in yeah. the group stages and between there and now, obviously, yeah, he has passed away. So mixed feelings. They got the t-shirts done. Yeah. They're all here. I'm sure he's here in spirit. So they're going to go out and and, uh, and give a good performance, not only for themselves but for him as well. So a nice touch. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it'll be on the big screen. So yeah, and the fans it. are here as well, respecting that. We will indeed absolutely respect that. We'll hear from the commentators after that minute's silence. I mean, if they weren't nervous enough, they're now giving them the Champions <laughs> League music. I know. I mean, the lads will be buzzing. I mean, yeah. fans, even me standing here listening to that, it just you know you're playing a football yeah. match, a proper football match. But the fans have arrived, so obviously the cameras can't see them right now. But you heard them as they were coming out. Please wish you well, fans are here, Steve. I now, yeah. Even I want to get my boots on with this, this <laughs> really? music going. Oh, look, you, right? listen, we're at Wembley. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it's, it's huge. I, I'm there, listen. It's one end, they're apprehensive now, they're a bit nervous, but I just can't wait to get going. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the uh, introductions, the formalities behind us are about to take place. You'll hear probably via the PA that there will be that period of uh, reflection to remember Jordan Matura. Um, but it's funny, it's funny how music, as well as obviously the, the, the scene that we've got here, the National Stadium, it kind of puts you in that frame of mind. It's, you know, football's on. Yeah. It brings you a different kind of buzz. Yeah. And, and I think Wembley brings you that. There's something about Wembley that just brings a completely different feeling to you. I mean, Steve's been stood here dancing half of the time, and I was like, you've got a game to play. Shout and out to the DJ, yeah, I'm doing the old yeah. two-step. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a gammy knee. Yeah, I know, yeah, seven weeks post-stop, but I can still go out there and do a bit, I reckon. I think so. If, you, if there's a spare Careful jersey... what you wish for, mate, they might drag you off. Jersey, I'm sure I can get out there. Don't worry. Is there, is, is there a bit of your wishes you were playing today? Only when it comes to Wembley. I mean, since the time I haven't thought about football, but you know, certainly when I watch the Lionesses in the summer at Wembley, watching out today it makes you want to put your boots back on for sure. Well, obviously more from these two as the day unfolds, but I think uh, as we mentioned, there will now be as the teams come together around the centre circle, there will be a uh, a short period of uh, 
remembrance and silence for the very sad loss of Jordan Matura, the, yes. the Bulls head goalkeeper who died unexpectedly. He was just uh, a young man, uh, barely into his 30s, lost him in September. So we will definitely pause and uh, remember Jordan before kickoff here at Wembley. After which we'll hear from Adam Virgo and Adam Summerton who will call the action for us, my colleagues from National League Football. But we'll just stop now and remember Jordan Matura. Well, this, for all concerned, really is special. You know, watching people live a dream to play at Wembley for almost all, even many professionals, something that never becomes a reality. But today, they step on one of the world's most famous patches of grass and with friends and family, as you've seen, watching on as well. It really doesn't get any better than this for an amateur player. And now, I guess it's about making memories, about seizing the moments i have adam virgo alongside me who throughout your professional career never got the chance to play at wembley no i didn't and it's one of the, the things in my career when i look back on that it's just one thing i always missed and i had one opportunity in a penalty shootout where we lost to luton and they went on to play scunthorpe in what was the the sort of the papa john's the sort of the, the football league trophy and that still bugs me today even though i've been retired now for 10 years but this is a wonderful occasion we've been here for the vars in particular for non-league finals days and we can just see what it means to everybody that's associated with the football clubs in those respective competitions but this will be absolutely so so special for these players for their families and everything about them that a unique opportunity to play at Wembley Stadium I was reading an article that even Pele, one of Pele's biggest regrets was not to play here and this will be a huge occasion for everybody and I just want to get the game started now the formalities of the build-up is what you're really nervous about but once the game starts then I'm sure the players will really really settle into it really well so we're just about ready to go then what a big day this is for all these players focus in the ice determination the will to win Paul Smith is the referee for the men's final He's refereed in the pub cup for four years now Special day for the officials as well. We should remember that. Big occasion for them as well. The 2022 edition of the Pub Cup was open to 64 men's and 64 women's teams. The biggest ever women's Pub Cup tournament. We'll get the final of that later on this afternoon. But the focus on the men now. The Bulls heads in green. Up against the Wishing Well from Preston who play in the purple strip. This is a day that for such a long time, pretty much every day since they qualified for this final, that they would have pictured, thought about, dreamt of. And now it's a reality. We are underway. The Bulls head against the Wishing Well at Wembley Stadium. Let's just hope we get a good contest here. Speaking to the respective captains and managers ahead of the game, I can only relate to you a huge sense of excitement that they are all going through maybe a bit of nerves Adam some trepidation as well it's for well in terms of their footballing careers it's their amateur careers it's the biggest day of their lives it is the it? biggest day of their lives and as a childhood 
you always grow up wanting to play at Wembley Stadium and this is something unique to players and I think the formalities to build up was one of these things that they will look forward to but there'll be a lot of nerves about it I think when you get into these situations now Adam you just want to be playing you just want to get out there and get a touch of the ball early play yourself into the game well and also try and find yourself a Wembley goal Wishing well, looking to go on the attack. Nudged there by Shad. Shad, one of the younger players in the Wishing Well side. He spent the last five years playing for the coach. Was described to me as the X Factor player in the Wishing Well side. Wilkes with the ball forward. Played forward here by Long. And with Carl Busby, who was absolutely brilliant in the semi finals at the Etihad. So critical penalty save that he made in fact he saved a total of six penalties in shootouts on the way to winning last season's Lancashire Cup as well they have had so much success of late the wishing well a couple of league titles and the Lancashire Cup I mentioned he was the hero of the Etihad final with that penalty save they were telling me that at the time they were down to nine men in the game as well because there were Simbins in operation they'd had two cents of the Simbin and then he pulled off that penalty save while they were down to nine that was a big penalty save at the time wasn't it we actually saw it on the VT in the build up to this game same moments and defining situations can sometimes make or break whether you can get to finals or tournaments and that was such an important part of that game with Carl Busby again. He did actually used to manage a team called uh, Cadley, Cadley under 18s. And his manager, Yasin Nemu, asked him to stop managing and come and play for him. He says now he can't get rid of him. <laughs> the manager of the uh, wishing well, Yasin Onemli, fantastic character a really good chat with him the other day you can see why the players are so keen to play for him his enthusiasm really is infectious you could say the same of his opposite number as well Jamie Leggett the manager of the Bulls head and the Yemo doing the closing down the number 11 there for the Bulls head It's certainly been a cautious start from both teams. I think sometimes in these situations, you just try and figure out how each other's going to play. And almost just feel into themselves into this occasion to so get those early nerves out of their system. Good touch on the ball. So the game's being played at a pretty slow pace. You'd certainly expect for the players to try and last 90 minutes on this big pitch. There's some holding going on there. And the ball's head will have a free kick in a promising position. really get the elevation to trouble Carl Busby the effort from Jack Smith this Sada the ball's head looking to get forwards 
with Omar Rowe. Rowe did the closing down there and the goalkeeper had to be careful they didn't handle outside of the box and I think he's just about got away with that Carl Busby it was a tight one that though right on the edge of the it, area yeah. so Omar Mike Rowe just making that run towards him goalkeeper putting an uncharacteristic position there to come out come out that far you've got to make it the spin away from the ball just certainly affected him slightly I said he did really, really well just to pull his hand away and not make a foul or give a handball outside the box. It's a great drive forward, this. And that's the sort of purpose and energy they're going to need from midfield it's quite an open start to the game with seven minutes gone Alex Santos a long way forward here but there is a, a push there by the youngster just 20 years old comes from Portugal also plays for Files under 23, Salek Santos in his second season now with the wishing well. Lakeland. Play forward here by Robinson. It was Stephen Wright who put that into touch. And it goes from the wishing well. It's been a long way to these finals. The winners of the regional tournaments took part in 11 aside playoffs back at the Etihad campus in Manchester in July. And the winners then booked their place at Wembley with 60 teams involved overall in the pub cup this season it's been an awful lot of effort and endeavor to get to this point and now they really want to make the most of this opportunity very own robbie savage played in this year's tournament for macclesfield's bar 27 in the manchester heat his team were knocked out at the semi-final stage and Robbie, I'm told, was simbined in a group match for a late tackle. Oh, nothing new there, is there? 
and he's found his level, which is always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have been glad, one would imagine, Adam, to get the first 10 minutes out of the way because that's when you get rid of that bit of nervous tension and energy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's always really important that the early part of this game, you just want to settle into it, not make an early mistake. You just want to get that early touch on the ball. You can clearly see the both sides are just still trying to feel each other out. It almost feels like they just don't want to make an early mistake. really understandable in the circumstances as it was owing it was uh, rather Bulls had with a chance, well, I thought to put it into the box, but he played it short and it almost paid off for them. Stefan Wright it was with the attempted cross, it was something off the training ground there. Yeah, decent defending there from Santos at the near post. So you're quite right to mention there, just maybe to get that ball into the box and That's it. Again now with Busby. Rose done well here and then just loses it at the vital moment. It just seems to be in one or two decent positions there, Omar Rowe, just in that central area. You can see the pace that he's got driving forward, the boy Adebayo there playing down the middle. Somebody that can stretch play as well. Just seems to be breaking down within that final third, especially for the ball's head going forward. I think they've got some better areas with the ball, but unfortunately it just breaks down for them in these key situations. over the top which was quickly 
brought to you by Carl Busby. It's been the busy with the two goalkeepers so far. It goes from Nathan, Nathan Smith. Robinson back here to Patrick Oman. Robinson, I'm told, a huge Liverpool fan, grew up idolising Steven Gerrard. Green, green it was with the pass inside, and now Walker sends it forwards and Lakeland with the ball inside and the effort in the end just really lacked the power from D Edmonds who will be a threat in the final third in his second season it's really the chief goal threat for the wishing well well he's got an abundance of goals isn't he and they really maybe just struggled to get him into the game just purely just looking at the way they're wanting to play they're not really either trying to stretch play by the ball in behind or trying to play through the thirds we certainly know the goal threat he is, Dennis. Certainly a half a chance, half an opportunity, but with a comfortable save in the end. He scored 32 goals in his first season with the wishing well. D. Edmonds was their top scorer, in fact, the league's top scorer. There's a little bit of afters here involving Jack Smith. Moore stood over the free kick. Just didn't quite come down quickly enough, and Anthony Brook it was who got in the way there for the wishing well. George Moore's ball forward. Flag up on this near side. Sitting up a couple of occasions down the left hand side now for Wishing Well in terms of Stephen Wright getting forward for the ball's heads. There is a little bit of space down there as you can see. for Adam Stannis there on the left-hand side. If they can get decent possession in that midfield from Paul Lakeland to get that ball down to the left-hand side, there is a bit of space for the wide player to maybe get in behind Stefan Wright.
worked this really nicely as the shot is looked to be deflected. It was, and it will be a corner kick, but that was a really bright yeah, was, move, yeah. wasn't it, from the bull's head? Yeah, I mentioned out of the aim there. Certainly earlier on, you could see the pace of him wanting to run in behind. Bassett there with a really good little bit of link-up play. They seem to be the ones that are really just trying to play a little bit more within that final third. It's not a bad delivery there. Bassett just couldn't quite grow enough to get to it. And that's over here, but he certainly put a really nice move together there in the lead-up to the corner, the Bulls head. Yeah, I just think that they probably have settled into the game a little bit more. Talk about the nerves of both teams coming into this situation. Both managers will certainly just be wanting for their sides to maybe just get a couple of shots on target. Nathan Smith. Calmly done by the goalkeeper, Busby. Owen Green. Sada up towards D. Edmonds. Good idea that from Sada, but it was always going to take something pretty special from the edge of the box there for Edmonds. Yeah, I think just making the right decision there, maybe had a little bit more time to bring it down on his chest. But just now on a couple of occasions in the last couple of minutes. They are finally getting the Edmonds into the game just that little bit more. Nathan Smith. It's Ben Long's ball forward, and this is Omar Rowe. Rowe's looked handy, hasn't he, in that midfield he area? Done. I mean, he's picked up one or two decent positions, especially in that sort of midfield role where he's played between the lines. And I mentioned really early on in this game that he certainly wants to get on the half turn and just try and be that provider would you say would be the happier of the two managers Adam after the first 25 minutes yeah I think that certainly the Bulls here Jamie Langland and would be I think the happier of the two managers so far I think his side are just trying to play in the right areas which is so so important we know that time and time again the ball's going to break down and sometimes they're going to try and force the ball a little bit too much. And that's what we what I keep hearing from the Wishing World players. Just play a little bit more, just be a little bit braver on the ball. You're going to get a little bit of time. Yassin on Emily is the man in charge of the wishing well. Originally from Turkey, he's lived in England since he was 13. He was telling me how from a small part of Preston called Lostock Hall where he owns his uh, kebab shop. He says that it's really brought together the local community, the team. He says what a camaraderie there is, not just between the group of players, but their families, their friends. There's around 400 people have made the journey from that part of Preston today just to come and support them. Such a big occasion for 
all the players out on the pitch there today representing their local areas, their families, their friends. Tight contest so far though, not too much in the way of goal mouth action. Offside flag is up after the ball forward from Ben Lonk. This could be promising. The effort from George Moore. They've made a good break from the midfield. Yeah, misplaced pass out from the back there. And then all of a sudden you just need that bit of quality, and that's what Nathan Smith down that left hand side. I think the angle is certainly working against George Moore to take the shot on. If you take the shot on from that angle, go higher. It's a deep delivery, but close enough to Nathan Smith who was in the six yard box Omar Rowe much wide by Carl Busby yeah I mean if you certainly feel that the next goal is going to be coming you'd certainly favour the ball's head now it's been a really really good five minutes from them in terms of creating chances and finally getting shots towards goal Certainly been one of the most standout players in this first half, Omar Rowe, in terms of trying to dribble with the ball, bring the ball forward in those central midfield areas and just try to get the shot then, but just dragging it wide of the post. Stefan Wright. out by Carsley. Oh, they brought that one nicely. The Edmonds to make something of it another stab as it was putting on the pressure Edmonds was involved earlier on in the move it's a good little play there a good little link up play moving the ball quickly I said it's probably been their best out ball down that left hand side in terms of stammers picking up that decent position in behind right in that full back area Harry Healy it was with the challenge there for the Bulls head. Now they've not had too many opportunities like this, have they? The wishing well to get it in the no, box. How many of the chances now we see at National League level, don't we? Time and time again, how important set plays can be when you've been against the pressure. D. Edmonds, the number 10, is one of those in there. It needs a quality delivery from Stammers. And it was Edmonds who got to it first. And they've got four in the box here, the wishing well. Edmonds has held his position. Alex Santos it was. It was one of those forwards. It was Josh Sharder who tried to play in the ball. This is a bit better now from the wishing well with almost half an hour gone. Yeah, and they needed this bit of sustained pressure as well. Carsley's in there, number 12. The goalkeeper came a long way for it and wasn't entirely convincing there, Patrick Coleman. They rather got away with one there, the Bulls head. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily the best from the goalkeeper there. You've got to be a lot better in terms of simple cross coming in to use your box and dominate it with a decent catch. Throw in one by Lakeland. It's certainly just one of these high crosses. You go all the way, you've got to be stronger than that. That's why you surround the goalkeeper on the line. If he does come out, then you... As a defender, go back on the line just in case he makes the mistake. Spent some time at West Ham. The goalkeeper, Patrick Oman, half Australian, half Swedish. Actually played in the same school team as the Manchester United defender, Victor Lindelof. That will have given a little bit of uh, yeah. hope, though, to the wishing well who 
as you said earlier, perhaps it's the bull's head. He've looked the more likely to score for the most part in this first half an hour, but that a promising spell yeah. for the wish. I think when you analyse a game like this, especially the players playing at Wembley, as Steve Sibber was saying before the game, it's about the nerves and enjoying the occasion. It almost seemed like the bull's head settled into the game more. Bassett with the chance to hit one, but just got underneath it. Danny Bassett, an opening nevertheless, though, for the bull's head. So yeah, I mean, going on to that left-hand side of his certainly creates a little bit of space for himself to get the shot but again you're looking at the angle just working against him it's just mentioning before that shot you were just looking at the wishing well just possibly in the last 10 minutes I think they look a little bit less nervous than what I think the ball's head work in the early periods of this game Dominic Morgan Griffiths, the player who just there came on for the Bulls head number 17. was put under pressure by Omar Rowe. This is a weapon that they do have in their armory, the ball's head, and it's causing one or two issues, this, and it's Bassett who couldn't quite get on the turn. Lakeland's there, it's uh, Adiemo. He just couldn't quite get it out of his feet quickly enough. That was really calmly done. to go until half time chances certainly have been at a premium it will be the wishing wells ball Jack Smith coming off at him, it just seems now that Danny Bassett's going to be playing down the middle. It's probably the one thing when you look at both sides in terms of what they offer in the final third, you think you probably look at the ball's head having a little bit more pace than what the Wishing Well are offering, but the likes of Adam Standers and D. Edmonds, what they will have is that physical presence up there. 
Well, Danny Bassett certainly should be a goal threat. He's Tooting and Mitchum's top goal scorer of the last decade. Once played in the FA Cup first round proper against Oldham. I'm told as well that he shared a pitch with a Champions League finalist, the former Liverpool player Jermaine Pennant. Yet to really open up this final. It's a good ball in towards the Edmonds who got on the turn but couldn't trouble the goalkeeper, Patrick Oman. He's had three opportunities, and maybe if you just think about the decision making that he's made three occasions he's made the wrong decision to bring the ball down there Wilch just on the edge of the box and maybe he could just lay it off to him oh, they're just trying to make that turn and spin to try and get a half shot towards goal Robinson Adeyemo George Moore making his way into the box and the back heel was intended for Nathan Smith. I wonder whether the easier ball, the simpler ball was perhaps would have been the better ball there for George Moore. Morgan Griffiths. Long has lost it. And there was a clear pullback on Tom Walker. And the wishing well bench were not happy about that at all. Did appear quite cynical. And we are going to see a yellow card here, the first of the game, and I don't think that the Bulls head can have too many complaints about that. No, not at all. It's just one of those ones that you certainly make as a player where you stop the counter attack happening. Certainly a sinister challenge there. No surprise to go in the book. Green's header. Oh, there could be a chance here, and there is, and it's taken. Adi Yemo with it. The deadlock is broken at Wembley, and it's the Bulls' header in front. Adi Yemo with the calm finish. Took it so, so well. That's a brilliant, brilliant finish there from Adi Yemo. Spoke about the ball's head pace in that final third. That's a well taken finish. Just that little bit of pace to take it away from Brook there to try and make the challenge. Busby comes out and then all of a sudden you just need that bit of interplay. Bassett did that absolutely brilliantly and what you want is a cool composed finish in that situation that Adeyemo's done that to give them I think a deserved lead nice a player who's represented England at six a side level his day job is a research assistant at a hospital He's somebody who's traveled the world playing in small sided tournaments and you could almost see that there from the level, how calm he was, the technique, the composure, skill on the ball. He made that look a lot easier than it he actually did. was. There's a psychological difference as well, going through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper at Wembley Stadium. So now you can get yourself a Wembley goal. That certainly plays on the factor there, and that's what makes the finish even better for me, I think. I think it's one they deserve. I think when you look at the whole play of this first half so far, I certainly feel that the ball's head probably deserve it. And it's really important now that the wishing well just don't concede another one quickly. That's it with the ball back, and they are coming under pressure. And the ball's head sends an opportunity to get a quick second. Omar Rowe, it was with the effort there. They'll get a corner and they'll keep the pressure yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, Carlsley there with a really important block there. So I don't think he makes it. I think Omar Rowe gets himself a goal. They've just got to dig in a little yeah. bit here, haven't they? The wishing well. Yeah, just before half time. Certainly looking at open play that they are certainly being a threat, the ball's head, but set plays now. Oh, 
goalkeeper decides to stay put. And struck from a long way out, and the goalkeeper just about kept that out. Maybe was a little unsighted, Carl Busby, but he's also been quite fortunate too there. He has been. Being a nervous smile. I thought maybe there was a foul there on Tom Walker when he went up for the head up. are in the ascendancy here the ball's head that's beautifully brought down isn't it by the goal scorer Adi Emo who's full of confidence here and they just need to get through to half time and to regroup the wishing well yeah, they've just lost their shape now haven't they Morgan Griffiths and Bassett in support still Morgan Griffiths it's a good pull back and the shot's on and it's sliced wide in the end by Harry Healy but well, the Bulls' head are very much on top here. That's a huge chance for Nathan Smith in the middle of the penalty area. You see he gets cut back to him there, just swipes at it. Again, just that little bit of composure in front of goal that was certainly lacking there, but that was a huge opportunity for the Bulls' head to find themselves a second goal. They almost put the game to bed. Just do with keeping it for a bit here. Yeah, they? I mean, wishing well. Game management now is really, really important. Yeah, you know, when the ball goes out for a throw, just take your time, just try and see this first half out because just at the moment, they're just under a little bit of pressure. Just seem to be first to everything at the moment, don't they? The ball said that's a lovely ball as well, but it's offside against Danny Bassett. I think just maybe now for the wishing world, Adam, just maybe just turn them, just playing the channels. Just at the moment, they're trying to play in that midfield area. And Mo and Morgan Griffiths are really pushing in that midfield area. They're winning the ball nice and high in that middle of the pitch, and they're making those quick through balls, which the wishing world can't really contain with the lack of pace they may have at the back. Put into touch by Ben Long. Green. It's well played by Adiemo, the goal scorer, about doing some defending there. There's just some holding going on there. But he's got away from it. Danny Bassett needs some support. Omar Rose getting in the box. He did really well to get away there. Bassett was clearly being held, and it comes off Omar Rowe. For a throw in but they were once again really stretched the wishing well well it's been a real good tactical change from the ball's heads once say jack smith was doing a lot wrong there in terms of the way that he was playing in the first 20 minutes but you can clearly see since they put bassett down the middle put walking griffiths on the counter-attacking play that they're showing now is a lot more effective but the wishing well just cannot contest with them at the moment they do need half time to come well, they could be in again here it's a lovely back heel and the shot on target and needed saving the effort by George Moore. And his positioning was good there, Busby. Good positioning there from the goalkeeper. Then the handling afterwards. After a slight fumble a couple of minutes ago that almost led to a, a goal. added time then at the end of this first half what would your first half reflections be Adam? I think it's been a, a fairly entertaining first half I thought the first 20 minutes of the game you could clearly see that neither side really wanted to make a mistake and that's certainly evident to see from both teams but then all of a sudden it's almost how can you play yourself into the game and not let nerves get the better of you and I have to say that the ball's head of 
I think, deserve their lead going into half-time. I think they've created the better opportunities. I think the pace in that final third is certainly there. But I do think a ball down the left-hand side for the wishing well in terms of Adam Stammers could be a good out ball for them. I think that Stefan Wright wants to get forward. He's more of a, an attacking fullback, which is certainly natural for him to do. But they can just control the ball a little bit higher up the field, make better decisions in the final third. They might get themselves a goal. But the fact it's 1 0 keeps them in the game going into the second half. And they've just maybe seen out this period towards the end of the first. I think there will be a, almost a little bit of a sense of relief with the wishing well that it is only one because certainly the Bulls' head in the latter stages of that first half were very much on top. His goal is the difference. Lovely finish by Adi. Adi Yemo took his goal really well. Showed great composure as he went through on goal. Work to do for the wishing well. A big team talk ahead of their manager as well. But Jamie Leggett, the boss of the Bulls head, will be pretty pleased. One would imagine that only goal of the first half coming after 40 minutes. And it certainly was extremely well taken. The wishing well, as Adam Virgo was saying, though, will feel that they, if they can approach it slightly differently, they will get back into this in the second half. But let's hear from the man whose goal is the difference at the break. Adi Adeyemo is with Matt Smith. Very much, Adam. Yes, Eddie, alongside me. How's that for you? Yeah, great experience, man. Um, a bit of a blow. The pitch is massive. Uh, I don't think I've been on the pitch like this, but yeah, nice. Good experience. Yeah. Listen, we've been impressed with your build-up play, with your athleticism. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been the better team? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think we're keeping the ball better and playing a lot better football. And as you can tell, we look a lot more fitter than them. So, yeah, man, this is great. And how about that goal? Bit of composure? Yeah, man. Um, you know, I was going to take it first time, but I thought, you know, it's Wembley. I've got to make a <laughs> make it a good one. So I went around the keeper and slotted it. So, yeah. yeah. Have you played a good standard yourself through your youth? Uh, um, not really, you know. Probably just in non, sorry, non league. That's yeah. the best I've played. So, yeah. Because you showed a bit of composure there to yeah. think, to, to have that in your mind to go, keeper's coming, I'll just drop round him. That takes a bit of thinking about on a Wembley pitch. Yeah, you know what? Um, I've had a good week. I actually got a hat trick on Tuesday for my for my team. So, um, just in good form right now. So, I just took it here. Yeah. And how are the legs? You mentioned obviously it's a big pitch. I mean, it's yeah. a big day, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, no, I've got a lot of energy. It's Wembley. You only play here what, once in, well. It's a, it's a special thing to play here, so I've got a lot of energy for, for Wembley. I know you coach, you want to speak, so you get inside and get re rested, and we'll yeah, see you yeah, for the second course, half. Yeah. Thank you very much, Adi. Adi Adiyemo, who has put the Bulls' head 1 0 up here at Wembley in the men's final. Remember the women later. Uh, here's what else is coming up on BT Sport in the days to come. In case you missed it. Wow. How does he do that? Unbelievable. Great shot. Let's see that again. I am early. I'm here. We play on BT Sport. Zachary Hoopo! What a punch! This is his moment. Here goes Pietar through a massive hole, and he's got support runners everywhere. Dan Thomas will roll, he won't! Rhys Zammett has come up with an extraordinary play here. I am Gabriel. Are you ready? Come on, you bunny. We play on BT Sport. So off we go then. And he's through there towards Mbappe. Unbelievable. Look at the joy. We're right from kickoff. One of the fastest.
fastest goals I've ever seen. Are you ready? I'm on. This is Liverpool. Oh, We play in City Sport. Well, the Bulls head and the wishing well are playing on BT Sport at the moment, certainly on YouTube in the uh, Pub Cup final for the men. Farah and Steve alongside me, and it's Steve's team who are in front. <laughs> and you should have seen him when that goal went in. He was like Mourinho down the touchline for Porto all those years ago. Yeah, it's the quickest I've moved in a few years. Oh, I, I was say impressed, that. mate. Yeah, no, well, what a goal. Eh? I mean, goal. it was, uh, as you said there, you know, real good composure. Uh, I think he's been probably the best player on the pitch, Addy, hasn't yeah, he? He's shown that little eye. bit of class and a lot of quality uh, and great composure to finish it off. But really impressed with the standard. I've got mm. to say, I thought no nerves or... Um, apprehension shall we say uh, from both teams settled into the game really well um, the wishing well they're practicing penalties behind the substitute so yeah. whether they're Gordon dash to you I know he, he was telling you I was going to come on and change the game he was he just said it then we interviewed him pre-game and, and he was telling me he's the best player on the team so I asked him <laughs> why you sat him on the bench then we need someone on, on the pitch and he, and he spoke about his age being an issue and that he can't play 90 minutes anymore I said well you need to get yourself on at the half and, and hopefully come out with that wonder goal that he scored you know that helped his team get to the final here at Wembley I know it's easy to say because the pitch is big and it's a big day for the lads yeah. but a bit of composure from perhaps your team because they haven't quite got the athleticism of the Bulls head for sure, I think so. I think you know their best, their best player has been their goalkeeper. Yeah. You know, Carl. I think he showed the most composure yeah. with his feet and finding passes. But it's in that final third area where the balls have been much more composed and had the better quality. Hence why they're they're one 0 ahead. But I think if if uh, the Wishing Wells can show that little bit of composure in that final third, they might have a chance of getting back into the game. Mm. Because it's only one nil, Steve. It's only one nil. Next goal is obviously going to be the one. I'm hoping the balls uh, the balls there will come out, get that second goal, and try and kill that game off. Um, but yeah, I think it's just for, for the wishing well, it's just that, that final ball. Yeah. And, and in this, I say grassroots pub football, if you've got pace up front, it's, it's a killer, isn't it? Of course it, it so is, at any level. That could, be, any level. Uh, that could be the one for Because your team can play quite high on a big pitch, knowing that there isn't anyone really to worry them in behind. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully they can just, again, use that composure, use the ball, get the wishing well to come on to them and suck a punch and, and yeah. get them behind. But we, it's been a typical grassroots pub game. Yes. We've had a flat ball with a complaints about the balls Brilliant. being flat, Love tackles it. going in. So more of it, please. I know. We, we're enjoying it. We've been up with the fans because yeah. they're allowed a few hundred in each team and it's been great listening to them they don't half get involved <laughs> they do yeah it's fantastic it's great that they, they can actually be here they're locals to the, to the team that they support every week so for those fans also to get an opportunity to come to Wembley might not have ever been before but they are making some noise up there for sure <laughs> they really are they really are our ears have been burning once or twice it's fair to say okay uh, let's just remind you of the highlights from that first half of the men's cup final uh, here at Wembley to the Bulls head at half time as you can see your super subs just come out Jordan Dashty interesting um, also Farah that it is roll on roll off subs here today so that might be a factor in the second half 
Yeah, definitely. And it, to be to be fair, it was wishing well as it was asking before the game if they could use that policy yeah. of the roll on, roll off. As they said, it will, will potentially help them in the long run. You can see Jordan, he's took the armband as well. He's come out, he's got the armband round him. It's Paul Rank. Uh, looks like he's going to come on. Hopefully he can be the difference. I think they need somebody like him. He showed a little bit of pr- uh, pace in the, in the pre-tournament to, to get his team to the final. He certainly can shoot and score from distance. So that could play a, a factor because, as you say, they can't they can't seem to get in behind this, uh, these balls at the minute. Yeah. So hopefully they can, uh, if there's a, a, a shot from distance, that they can have he'll certainly be one that will take that he talked the talk didn't he it's fair yeah, to say he, he talked the talk on the sideline so he's going to have to be good now he did yeah even before the match he was uh, he weren't shy of, of grabbing <laughs> his 15 minutes of fame but no listen this was all about it's about coming here enjoying the day uh, and when you get a chance to shine you know go and take it but as you said roll and roll off subs now the ball's you know it's, it's a game it's a second half where they the game could c- c- roll into their hands yeah. they don't, you know they, they don't want to go out all guns blazing, leave themselves acceptable to, to go into in level terms. So, uh, yeah, the Wells will come out and, uh, and hopefully get some more goals. Because you were saying, I think the first time you played here, it is that kind of big of a day and occasion, a pitch, that even you felt the cramps. It's so it's so zapping. It, it just zaps all you. And the excitement, the adrenaline, yeah. everything. And then all of a sudden you hit 60 minutes and it comes crashing down. Yeah. And you, you know, you have that buzz that really helps you get going. Mm. But then, as I said, that 60-minute mark, you really start to feel it. And, and I did in an FA Cup final here, started to cramp up and hadn't cramped up for 15 years prior to that. <laughs> so uh, it definitely plays a part in, in uh, you know, certainly on a big pitch like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think they've got three or four minutes before they start again. There's one or two re-emerging. Perhaps want to get another feel for the pitch. Yeah. Wishing well. Um, we'll be out, I'm sure. Um, they're out certainly in part at the moment. Uh, dribbles and drabbles. Uh, what about your team? What do you want to see second half? Just more of the same. I think they've been the better team first half. You know, play good football, nice and composed, especially in midfield, getting time and space. Uh, listen, obviously this level is just that final bit of quality in the final third. Yeah, it's a big pitch. It's just used to getting used to the time in your runs in behind uh, in behind defenders. But look, we talk about the pitch. The, the, the pitches that they've been used to playing probably is oh, n- bit different to this. Bit different to this. Bit Let's put it this. that way. Uh, listen, don't forget later there's the women's final. A little reminder now of the two teams that have made it to Wembley in the women's competition. Everybody sees the Premier League and the level that it's at in the Champions League, but look, this is what football is, this is what it's all about, you know, this is where a lot of the young kids, they start and then they, they go into, so this is, uh, this is football at its, at its purest in a way, they just do it for the love of the game. The standard is, has just ramped up massively. They definitely want to win, have been uh, really competitive, um, but it's also got a big level of skill to it. You can see you've got on the sideline, you've got coaches and managers who are working on things they've worked on in training. Over now, 50 friends, then. Cover, recover, recover. We all started playing like this, you know, in teams like this, all of us that made it to the level that we did. We all started in, in teams like this. Football is is everybody's game. That's the beautiful thing about it. And it's obviously with Wembley at stake here in the finals, it's, uh, it's a lot to play for. So the white ball and the three tons of the two women's team that will feature later. White ball being Farah's team with a 56 goal striker involved, I think. So no pressure, but she'll have to be good. Uh, and Stevie, obviously, you've got then the three tons yes. who are from Suffolk. They are, yes. They was the swan, believe it or not, in the uh, previous rounds. In the industry, we know pubs get shut down that. So they uh, they, they close and they've still uh, reformed, still wow. going, made it to the final. So fair play to them yeah almost like a bit of a, a morality tale Brilliant. of modern times yeah. isn't it yeah all, yeah. all part of yeah. modern Britain yeah. I guess uh, your team are back out 
What do you want? Yeah, they just, well, they look like they're making a couple of substitutions, which I think uh, certainly will improve the energy. I think they started well. I think we, we looked organised when, yeah. when we started. It was quite competitive for 25 minutes. And then, as I, as I said, I think the balls, you know, their, their athleticism uh, sh- shone in the end and then they got their goal from that. But I think if they bring on Jordan... As I mentioned, one thing that he can do is get beyond these uh, these ball back four and uh, hopefully get a chance. Yeah, he's Jordan Dash yet. You could call him Jordan Mbappe from the oh. pre-match chat. <laughs> <laughs> he's that kind of level. He's certainly a confident lad. I think this, the subs is a massive factor, isn't it? Especially it's got as, to be, isn't especially it? as the game goes yeah. on. As we said about the pitch, it's the biggest pitch they probably ever played on. That's going to oh, become a factor. Easy. So even if you just come on for off for five minutes and you yeah. go back on, you know that could be that could be key yeah. and concentration as well. Because when you get tired, concentration, yeah. as you know. Um, far because that's there'll be a temptation it. to chase it as well, like any yeah. team would, and then of course that's going to get ever more sapping of, of what, whatever you've got left in those legs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think I think the Wishing Wells did that a little bit. Toward once they conceded, they tried to go for it, and yeah. then the Bulls actually got a couple of big chances just before the half. So they were lucky in the end to go in at the half only one nil down. So hopefully they won't come out and chase. There's a big 45 minutes, and and hopefully it's one goal just get them back into the game. Yeah, yeah. Referee on his way back out. As now, then are the Bulls head? Just see them re-emerging. They look. Pretty happy with things, Steve, as you would be. They would be. I'm sure they'd be in the dressing room. I mean, even we didn't even mention it before the game. They brought their own production company down, the Bulls Head. So wow. it's all been, you know, it's all been documented. Their journey to here. So you can imagine uh, the scenes in there at half time. Wow. You know, probably a bit of calming down time as well. I tell you, what, one pub has had to change <laughs> name, and the other's got its own production company. Levels, all about the levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would hope so. I would hope so. No hip flasks allowed at Wembley, that's for sure. Uh, even in the Pub Cup. OK, more from Farah and Steve at full time. But uh, high time, I handed you back to Adam and Adam for the second half. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, well, the wishing well have been out for quite a while. It seemed like it was a fairly short, sharp team talk that was dished out to them at half time. The side who trail here at Wembley, the Bulls head in front. Adi Adi Emo with the only goal of that first half that was expertly taken Adam, but uh, from the Wishing Wells perspective, I think they will feel they can do much better. They can offer much more here than yeah, maybe I think they so. did. I think they had three or four occasions when they bought and they got that ball into the final third. I mentioned about the decision making of the Edmonds in terms of spoke about the goals that he could score, but I think three or four occasions, if he made a better decision, then I think they maybe had a better shot towards goal. But what they have to be really, really aware of in this second half is the counter attacking pace. The longer this game goes on, the fatigue will certainly creep in. The subs will have to make a big difference and come on to try and keep the momentum going. But I think the reflection on the scoreline, I think that the Bulls had certainly deserved their lead. And I think that wishing well, you're going at one goal down and you know you can play better. That can certainly give you extra incentive to try and go and get that first goal. But the next goal is going to be absolutely crucial. Yeah, it certainly is. We'll see if the wishing well can offer more going forward. We did see glimpses of them in that respect. Particularly with D. Edmonds, who had a few half chances on the edge of the box. You see number 15, Aaron Ayton, has come on at half time for the wishing well. Early touch here for Alex Santos. Rowe on the attack here for the Bulls' head, who are a goal to the good at Wembley. Still plenty of time, though, for the wishing well to try and salvage the, salvage the situation and an early injury here for the wishing well Walker the player who is down here yeah just one of those ones just a little tap there from Healy there just certainly a saw one on top of the foot Tom Walker is a PE teacher at Lostock Hall High School, place for Northwich Victoria on Saturdays. He's described by his manager, Yasin, as a machine when he spoke to me. He says he's very health conscious. I like this as well. He told lots of little stories about the players individually. He said, while the rest of the team have beer and pizza after a game, Tom has one Diet Cola and then goes to the gym for two hours. You're sounding like me in my prime. <laughs> <laughs> the first bit. <laughs> I mentioned in the first half how Yassin, the head coach of the Wishing Well, owns his own uh, kebab shop. And he said one of the ways he's managed to attract players over the years to the Wishing Well is by promising them free pizza. 
and I'm not making that up either. <laughs> Stefan Wright, it is who will take the throw in. Self employed business owner and salesman. He's had a trial at Crystal Palace while playing for the Danny Shitu Academy. That's his long throw in. Couple of changes at half time for the wishing well with uh, Owen Green and Paul Lakeland being replaced by Jordan Dashti, who's got the goal of the tournament so far. It's a 40 yarder he scored, and Aaron Ayton, as I mentioned earlier, has also come on for the wishing well. Not really surprised, Adam, to see those changes at half time. It, it felt like it needed freshening up a bit, didn't it? It did do. I think we we're just talking about that bit more composure within that final third, which is also be really, really important for them. It's so no surprise when you see a manager make a couple of changes at half time just to try and influence the game and try and get the second half started better for them. All coming off the referee, which is why the play has been stopped. So the Bulls had with the throw in. Walker's lofted ball forwards. Bowled out here by a Patrick Oman. Brought a long way here by Stefan Wright. He's going even further. It's a really good run. Stefan Wright with the ball in, but it's comfortable in the end for Carl Busby. Well, you mentioned about his attack and play in that first half. Stefan Wright trying to get forward. It's probably the first time we've seen him into a decent area with the ball. Just maybe forced across a little bit too early. Wishing Wells free kick. Five and a half minutes gone in the second half here. Still no change in the score from half time. We're hoping that those two changes they made at the break will have an impact. The Wishing Well. in by Wright lost by Healy it's a good ball forward brought down nicely by Stammers as well D Edmonds tried to play it quickly maybe too quickly it's a good ball inside two in from Stammers Walker Aaron Aiton played it wide one of the players who's come on at half time this is better from the wishing well eight and oh lovely ball but just a heavy first touch and the chance was gone walker it was who let it get away from him but that was better from the wishing well yeah, decent run there from eight and making the run in the hind in the defense there that creates a space there for walker but 
So you'd be slightly disappointed with that first touch. It was a chance. Yeah, that, it was. Wasn't it? it was, and that's the first time really seeing a midfield runner making that run in behind create space so many times. If you kick the ball well in that final third, which they did that time. Sliced into touch. Just one or two encouraging signs here for the wishing well, the side who are a goal behind here. Well, they had a couple of moments in that first half when they were on top and when they were confident and they were getting players forward and using the ball well. Of course, the ball's head defence, a few issues and a few problems. It was important they needed to start the second half well, and I think they've done that, especially with the changes that have been made. I've seen Walker playing a little bit higher up the field now in that midfield position. Came off the head of Dashti. Who, as Matt was saying at our time, comes across a confident lad, doesn't he, when he was interviewed before the game. It's a brilliant goal that he scored at the Etihad from 40 yards. It's Dashti Hughes won it back. His manager was telling me that uh, Jordan Dashti sells luxury watches and apparently the players are always on at him to get a discount <laughs> <laughs> alex santos will keep this in and they're getting numbers forward here the wishing well came off stamets wilkes was there and Aiton did well again, and in it goes, it's a great chance! Oh, what an opportunity that was for D. Edmonds! Goal was gaping. Now at the other end, it's the Bulls header in here. Just over hit the pass. Oh, what a chance that was. And he knows it's a big chance. He works it so oh. well, Adam. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dashley there on the right-hand side, he's in again. Much better this from the wishing well. Zach Wilkes wants it. And Edmonds is there again! It's another chance for the number 10. The flag is up this time. But what a golden opportunity spurned it was before this one. It's the first chance, wasn't it? seen enough to suggest that the wishing well can get back into this but that the chance that yeah, was missed i'm an absolutely huge chance set actually down the right hand side the substitute has made a big difference in terms of his quality on the ball and that was a brilliant ball across should have been a goal maybe it's nerves playing a part on the big stage because i remember speaking to his manager yasin on Emily before the game, he described D. Edmonds as a goal machine. He said he got 32 goals in his first season, scored in the Lancashire County Cup final as well last season, the 2 0 win over Bamber Bridge. At his last club, Hunters FC, he scored 144 goals in six seasons. Walker, it's noticeable here that whilst the Wishing Wells level has gone up a bit, Adam, the Bulls' head seems to have dropped a bit, then They're struggling really. To get into the flow of the game in this second half in the wishing well are looking to do the pushing they're playing much higher up the pitch those kind of balls in the first half will be in linking up really well bassett this was talking about the eddie emma chance when he took it through i think there's a psychological thing in these players minds that they can get themselves a wembley goal and i think that the edmonds get a little bit too much time to think about it He's on the ball again here. A run into the box by Zach Wilkes. Great determination here from the Wishing Well to try and get back into this. Sada. And turned behind by Callum Robinson. At the, at the moment, it is all the Wishing Well. Asking a lot of questions here of the Bulls' head defensively. Well, it's really important when you're on top in games to score. 
Aaron Robinson there just dealing with the situation but that was a nervous clearance set what happens now when you're under a little bit of pressure to try and find this goal now when they're on top it's Stamus who'll take this he's got a lovely left foot as well Stamus this ball in towards Aiton I think he's made a difference Adam Aiton who came on at half time I think both of them Adam I think Aiton in that midfield made a good difference and dashing down the right hand side it's getting further forward but they're keeping the ball slightly better they weren't doing this in the first half and maybe the manager said you know this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity and at the moment you've let yourselves down a little bit but you can't say in the second half that they have done because I think they've been absolutely excellent old cl cliche isn't it of playing at Wembley don't let the game pass you by and maybe that was the case a little bit with the wishing well players in that first half and the team short talk must have been very short indeed because they were out way before the ball's head I said that to you you said that they're out early and I said I don't think the manager would have had too much words to say to him I think just go out there and just get used to the atmosphere and just get used to the pitch and being out at Wembley the second half they're a totally different side and yes the substitutions have made a difference but there's a bit more confidence about them that the Bulls head don't really have an answer for at the moment to slow the game down a little bit here and then they look to go long turn into a good ball from the goalkeeper there played wide by Bassett and Rowe was one of those arriving in the middle and it's headed behind by Troy Carsley I think it's one of those occasions so when you look at teams that do play on the counter as the balls head have done in that first half is that so important the wishing world's defence just don't get caught high up and just laps that concentration just that one ball in behind we know the pace of Bassett's certainly there Nathan Smith down that left hand side getting forward as well Michael Apaya Kusi is one of those who's got across here Just come on for the ball's head in this second half the header clear was by Alex Santos Now they're looking a bit stretched here, the Bulls heads. Can the wishy well find a way to get on terms? Stammers with the early ball in. Too much on it for D. Edmonds and the goalkeeper with the touch. That rather snuffed out the danger. change being made here by the wishing well stammers it is who's going off Dion Holding is the player who's coming on he was the team's top scorer in the games at the Etihad. he had in fact he scored in the final there and has scored more than a hundred goals in five seasons with the team so there's certainly a goal threat's just been brought on by the wishing well yeah, it certainly is isn't it I said the bench will play a massive part in this second half. We've spoken about the pitch being so big and these players getting used to this. Oh, they could have been caught here and the offside flag was up. I thought it might be a close run thing that it was Healy. I think he'd made the break from the midfield. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again because I think Look close, that was it? very tight. Santos. Much more open contest. Flick through here for the Edmonds as the flag goes up against him now. And they're really unhappy with that decision. Feels he was onside. Let's have another look at it here. And the flick through was from Zach Wilkes. 
I think he was. Lack of ball got played round the corner. to go it's been a very enjoyable second half so far more to right Bassett the number seven has taken up a position in the box Santos blocked the cross from right it was Aiton who gives the way the free kick the foul on Stefan Wright. It's a little bit late there from the midfielder on the fullback. He's got forward in these right areas, Stefan Wright. It's more in the second half with the ball, it's been a good out ball for them. Something of a utility player, Stefan Wright. Very versatile, but has done well down that right hand side today. George Moore. Omar Rowe are the players stood over this. As, uh, Moore now walks away. Looks as though it will be Rowe to take it. It's in a dangerous position, this, for the Bulls' head to try and exploit. Just about the pace of delivery here from Omar Rowe. As Alex Santos said, that's the area that you're looking at. talking to there for Harry Healy as Rowe sends it in it's a fairly routine take for Carl Busby good distribution by the goalkeeper to find Josh Sarda <laughs> come here for Wilkes he's got Walker up in support Boot there from Jordan Dashti. They've gone with the two up front now. I wish you well just to try and get themselves this goal. It's certainly the right decision there. Just a high foot, even though I don't think it hit Callum Robinson in the face. to apply some pressure here the wishing well and they worked their way out of that press pretty well there the bulls head right again up against santos it's been a key battle that one and again right is brought down but his ambition down this right hand side is at times pushed the wishing well back i mean both fullbacks for the bulls head have certainly been an out ball for them where they've probably been brave and going forward without the ball and that's when sometimes you can get caught on the counter-attack, sometimes. So two more changes about to be made here by the Bulls head. 25 minutes to go. Can they see it out? Aside from Pratt's bottom in Kent. Wishing well from Preston. Omar Rowe is one of those making way here. Said, but the referee has noted that and then to play on it's Danny Bassett who's been hurt it's 
Looks like it's a problem with the elbow or the left arm here for Danny Bassett. It's a bit of an innocuous challenge, didn't it? Didn't really seem too much in it, but it seems to have gone down in a lot of pain. Mm. He seems to be struggling. It's a stonemason by trade, Danny Bassett. I mentioned earlier how he's played for Tooting and Mitchum, their top scorer of the last decade. I wonder how Jamie Leggett, the Bulls head manager, will be feeling. And he's won national five-a-side titles, two global five-a-side titles, ex-Scotland and England six-a-side manager, operations director for the GB Mini Football Federations. That's why we have this break in play. Let's have a look at the goal that separates the sides. It was in the first half, with five minutes of the first half to go, Adam, and it was taken beautifully, wasn't it, by Adi? Adiyama. Yeah, it was a really well-taken goal, and it was almost when the formation was changed and the personnel was changed with Smith coming off and Bassett going down the middle. And we always felt that the ball said that link-up play in the final third was coming. And at that period of the game, you felt if the team was going to get the first goal, it was going to be the ball's head. They managed to take it. It was a real tidy finish from that, going through a little bit of time to think about what you're going to do, take on the shot, take on the goalie, made the right decision. Good to see him back to his feet, Danny Bassett. Just giving the players that stoppage a bit of a bit of respite, chance to catch their breath ahead of what could well be a pretty frantic final 20 minutes here fully expect the wishing well to keep pushing to keep probing to keep hoping for that equalizing goal and they've certainly been much better in this second half you couldn't say they're letting the game pass them by no, not now. maybe could have said that in the first yeah, half. yeah first half i think when they look back on it i think they'll be slightly disappointed of how they played but i have to say second half they've been absolutely excellent and said about scoring when you're on top i haven't managed to do that yet but certainly are in the ascendancy I think the one fear factor is the longer this second half goes on they're going to leave themselves open to the back foot maybe the ball's head to get themselves that second goal maybe the decider but they're still in this game big time Danis Noor had made the run through the middle there players come on in this second half it's put into touch by Troy Carsley yeah, please can see the pass it Managed to stay on. Certainly been an important player in this game for them in that final third. So with 20 minutes to go here. Another change being made. Changing goal with Patrick. Omen going off. Oh, and the shot is just pushed wide there. It's a good save that needed to be as well from Busby, whose reactions were excellent. A yeah, huge save there from the goalie. A really important save as well, just to tip it round the post. They deal with that first ball where, but they circled the 18 yard box really, really well. It's more with the shot, I'd say it's an excellent save. Just about kept in on the far side, and then the challenge came in from Robinson. Certainly been kept busy in this second half. Callum Robinson has played under Darren Ferguson at Doncaster Rovers, the number six for the Bulls head. Into the box it goes. Santos with the throw-in. <laughs> the 
Holdings Holding has put a bit of pressure on here. Will another chance come the way of the wishing well? Holdings done excellent. They're queuing up in the middle here, but he went for goal. And Hussein keeps it out at his near post. It's a decent save there. Because the angle is always working against Holding there, but what he's done is produce the save. Corner was taken quickly. couldn't quite get there before Walker as Busby gets it clear for the wishing well well if they do get back into this the wishing well they'll be very grateful won't they to Busby for that save that he made a number of minutes ago because it's kept it at 1-0 and it's kept them in with a shout here. We've seen enough, haven't we, to suggest they could yet get back into oh, 100%. this. 100%. And they deserve a goal for their second half performance. But just at the moment, the type of shot's not really falling to them to really test the goalkeepers. And the angles have been working against them. You can see how open they are at the back now. Aiton with the touch forward, but it's going to come back out the wishing well. The ball's head looking to build down the left here. That's a lovely turn as well. Goalkeepers come out, and the angle was always working against Danny Bassett, and he's done well again there, Busby. Yeah, he's done really well. So many times you see a goalkeeper in this situation come charging out, and then maybe hesitate and go back, but that's why I was saying he needed to stay on the pitch, Bassett, because he's got so much pace there, but the goalkeeper comes out and makes another crucial save. Tommy Grindrod just come on there, you'll note, for the Wishing Well. In his fourth season with the Wishing Well, he's also played for Fylde, as many of these Wishing Well players have done. His dad, David, is on the club committee. Tommy Grindrod, who's just come on. 15 minutes to go. Walker's ball forward. Holding. Wright did really well there needed to get back quickly as there's a foul here by Tom Walker he's got three some work in that midfield yeah, he's done well second half I think he's just played slightly higher up the pitch just pressed slightly higher as well no sympathy nor a free kick from the referee as Santos Slices his ball forward into touch. The plan, a big part of the plan, Adam, for the wishing well must surely to be get the number 14 holding on the ball down this left hand side because he showed he's got the pace and the directness to cause problems. What he does, I mean, we had Adam Stanmers there in the first half at the beginning of this second half and in terms of his pace trying to get past Stefan Wright wasn't quite there but the position was there when he got the ball he was then trying to thread the through ball a bit further on but I think he's come on and made a huge difference Dion Holden in terms of his pace going forward and you're quite right to mention it getting the ball in those number one on one occasions you know on that one occasion that he can get past Stefan Wright and get himself that opportunity and chance to be seen but the angle was working against him
Stefan Wright to take the throw in then for the ball set. Wright seeing a lot of the ball down this near side. Jack Smith. Smith again. Rindrod loses it. Nathan Smith. Nice turn by Anis Noor. I'll keep it going here. The ball's head with rights, and there are plenty in the middle as well. Look to try and hit the byline and maybe to look to just stick it in the box rather than try and take on Santos. Morgan Griffiths with the ball into the area. Misjudged and miscontrolled by Smith. Moore. Anis Noor. Noor again, cleverly disguised the pass. They're looking dangerous here. The ball's heads. What a finish that is. And the approach play was excellent as well. And it's Danny Bassett who's got the second tier for the ball set. He drove that home. It's a moment he'll always remember at Wembley Stadium. And with just over 10 minutes to go, it's the Bulls head to the wishing well nil. Well, he's been absolutely fantastic in this game. Talk about pace and power that he's got. He's been the one out ball for the Bulls head in this second half when they've had to really absorb a lot of pressure. But it's a great first touch from him that opens the body out nicely. And then it's just about power and hitting the target, which he does. Absolutely crucial goal in this game now. Well, they've certainly had their chances in this second half to get back into it. And a man going off, you'll notice there, the number 10 for the wishing well, D. Edmonds. Well, you have to feel for him. He'll be having nightmares about that real sitter that was missed at 1-0. And so frustrating for him that he won't get the chance to try and get his side back into this. But full credit to Danny Bassett. As you said, Adam, he's been very good and... Noor as well, one of the substitutes with a key contribution in the lead-up to the goal as well. Dashti has played it wide here. Holding. Holding's done well. Dashti's in there too, and they keep it going with Holding. And free kick goes against the wishing well. I have to say on first sight, that looked a little harsh on the side from Preston. Well, they had a long period of the second half, the wishing well, where they were on top. They were the side that looked like the most likely to get the next goal but they weren't able to score while on top and it's come back it's to crucial you, you have to score when you're on top of game especially when you've absorbed a lot of pressure as the wishing well did in that first half adam i mean when you look at the opportunity again now they could be in here and the shot from holding is well saved that was another great chance. They have had opportunities. Well, they have done, and that one needs to go in. Went for power rather than precision. It's a good save, though, from the goalkeeper. It's a big save as well. I mentioned about the positioning of Leon Holden time and time again. I think when he reflects back on that, a little bit more composure to go for the corner rather than power. May have found himself a Wembley goal. Strength shown there by Troy Carsley. Time is of the essence here for the wishing well. Needs to be sent forward quickly.
right. Noor. He's done really well since coming on. Talented player, Anis Noor. He's played for the Somalian national team in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. Challenged by Santos. Morgan Griffiths is the player down. Right with the throwing. And it's Noor. Anis Noor has played for Somalia in the AFCON qualifiers. He's also played at St George's Park in the FA National Sunday Cup. Studied sports science at the University of Roehampton. Apparently does some modelling in his spare time as well. He's a busy lad. <laughs> Look through these two sides, there's some great stories. And whilst at the moment the Bulls head looked like the clear favourites to go on and win this, the effort from both sets of coaches and players just to get to yeah. this point is well, well worth commending. I'll say both teams have, I think, given very, very good accounts of themselves. I have to say that Danny Bassett, for me, has probably been the player of the game for me in terms of his contribution, especially with that second goal, so, so important for them just to give themselves that little bit of breathing space. And as you can see from his teammates on the bench, brought in a good performance. Wesley Allen is the player who's come on. <laughs> Wesley Allen, the man who's just been brought onto the pitch, runs a celebrity league called the Stars League. Many of uh, the players have played it. It's always been his dream to play at Wembley. Rolling subs in effect again here. It's just Ben Long going off on the far side. Well, how they need something to drop for them here, the wishing well, as we move into the final five minutes. They need a lifeline from somewhere. And somebody really stepped forward for them. It was D. Edmonds who's just come back on with the header. Can you imagine what must be going through his head having missed that chance at 1 0? I saw him when he went off, Adam. He just looked so frustrated with himself and dejected. And that will play on your mind for a long, long time. I'd say it's almost his Paul Gascoigne sliding doors moment, one at that end of Wembley. It could have been. See all the number of players they've got forward now just to really go for it, just get themselves that next goal. Even if it does end up being a consolation. Foul on Jack Smith. So eager to get the ball back, the wishing well, understandably. With time running out on the, the ball's head. So close now to making a dream become a reality to win a cup final at Wembley. Not too many can say they've done that. And they are right on the brink of it now. George Moore gets the call from the touchline to come off here. goes from Busby slip by D Edmonds Stefan Wright 
Well defended that by Troy Carsley. Oxley getting on the end of this. And hit one. Well, I had to hit and hope, really. Played that blind. Not sure that it was a cross or a shot, really. But to be fair to him, he put that into a pretty good area. It's a good shot there. Just maybe the angle was working against him. Jamie Leggett and Ike Abiji, the men in charge, have the ball's head. Ike Abiji works in recruitment, dad to two boys, Ryan and Jaden. Actually went to school with our very own Joe Cole. Still a job to see out here, though, for the ball's head. And Dion holding with the effort. They're not giving up, are they? They're still going in numbers to try and get themselves that next goal. This will be the issue now. Now the purple shirts that have got forward. Of course, we shouldn't forget an extra motivation. For the Bulls head today to win for their teammate Jordan Matura who so sadly passed away recently unexpectedly noticed that they've been wearing black armbands both sets of players it's the team from Pratt's bottom in Kent who are now surely only minutes away in the final minute of normal time Stefan Wright. Morgan Griffiths was caught there by Tom Walker. from the ball wasn't he there Walker from the benefit of the doubt by the referee referee happy about something here I think there's two balls on the pitch. I think one's flat and one's not. Just would be well advised to listen to his teammate there, I think. 2 0 down, they don't want to be a man down as well. what the yellow card was for thrown away by Tom Walker there's been a change in goal here you'll notice Carl Busby walking away they need to get it forward quickly here now there still could yet be a chance for them Holding. Walker was just beaten to it by Noor, who's done really well since coming on.
cross the backup goalkeeper you'll notice has come on for Carl Busby for the young player to get some time on the pitch and a free kick given here the referee had initially tried to allow the advantage with holding bursting into the box he's been the man to really well. try and make things happen hasn't yeah, he's he? done really well was just outside the it box was, the challenge, it? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's the right decision there from the referee. I think he certainly was trying to play the advantage and actually... Say, Holden actually made a foul afterwards. It's good refereeing, isn't it, really? Yeah, it was now. Just hit the target. Well, we're deep into added time already here. It's Aiton who puts it in there. And that might just be their last chance gone. I think they deserve a goal on their second half performance, Adam. I wish you when I think they've come out and would say been the better side in this second period of the game. But unfortunately, when you're just looking for that tiny bit of quality in the final third, Danny Bassett presided that to get the second goal, which ended up being the most crucial goal. And we go into a fifth minute of added time at Wembley. Bulls heads, supporters up in the stands, their friends and family ready to celebrate. The wishing well still trying to find a route back into this. Certainly have never given up. I've always kept trying to push and probe. It just hasn't been their day. Bulls head have done it. Oh, the moment they dreamed of has become a reality here at Wembley Stadium. Wembley winners, the side from Kent. They've beaten the wishing well here, who deserve so much credit for the effort that they've put in. But that extra little bit of quality on the day, certainly in front of goal, belong to the Bulls head, Adi Adiemo with a goal in the final five minutes of the first half and then Danny Bassett with a powerful finish in the second half. There were chances for the wishing well to get back on terms and he certainly gave everything Adam Virgo but maybe the Bulls had deserved winners in the end. I think so when you just maybe look at big games and big situations and you maybe look at the D Edmonds opportunity at 1-0 that could have made it completely different for the wishing well to get themselves that equaliser when they were on top in this second half but I think on the balance of play when you look at the chances created and the amount of saves in particular that Carl Busby had to make in that first half he made me feel that the Bulls had deserve this victory but I have to say both sides have given a real credible and accounts for both of their respective teams and I thought at a certain period of this game Adam I thought there's some really decent play I have to say but on reflection of everything I just really think that the Bulls had just maybe edged it with that tiny bit of quality in the final third that led to the two goals as ever at Wembley, in Wembley finals, a huge contrast in emotions, but how good will this feel for I those feel, Listen, it'll be, this is their cup final, this is their World Cup final, this is what you dream about. Whatever level of football you play at, you want to go and play at Wembley, and you can tick that off, and then when you get to Wembley, you want to be a Wembley winner. You want to be walking those steps that many great players in the past have done season after season, year after year. It's a stadium that is full of history, that players will know about and they'll have their own little moments growing up watching Wembley finals of what they remember good and bad memories but I have to say on reflection they deserve this victory and this is one you have to cherish for the rest of your life you'll notice there a few moments ago the number five one of the team managers JB Leggett there on the pitch wearing a, one of the players shirts you have to feel for the wishing well who did so well just to get here the team who won the Lancashire Cup won two league titles they've enjoyed so much success but it's the Bulls heads day to day big big smiles on their faces to win on one of the most famous pieces of turf in the world 2-0 they've won and let's get some reaction now with Matt Smith
Thank you, Adam. Yes, scorer of the second goal, Danny Bassett, with his champion's flag, is alongside myself and Steve. Happy boy? Very happy. Happy yeah. just to score at Wembley. Well, listen, not many can say that, can they? He scored in a competitive game, a final at Wembley. It's actually a crazy feeling. Like, I never thought that I would ever be able to score at Wembley. It's just unreal, like, genuinely. Like, it was probably one of the best feelings in my life. And listen, it was a good strike. Caught it sweet, didn't you? Yeah, I did, to be fair. <laughs> Surprised me a bit. <laughs> did, really? Is that not normally in the locker? No, it is, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, did you, was there an inkling, like, during the game that you felt that you might get half a chance and if, you, if that chance comes are you going to take it I knew that if I got in the right area like you said and I could come inside of my right foot yeah. I knew I was going to score yeah. genuinely I knew it yeah. I must say the composure uh, on both sides really was better than I was expecting the, the, the skill was better than I was expecting sometimes the athleticism on a big pitch is going to cost you but everybody seemed to enjoy it seemed to kind of want to be here and, and show off the skill of course you're at Wembley like you just want to like just embrace it like you might never ever get to experience again and the, the quality on show today was good like from both teams not just yeah, us yeah, like it was, it was a good footballing game yeah. and it was like I feel like everyone just wanted to come and enjoy it and that's what everyone did win or loss like you've got an experience that no one else can ever say they've had yeah. and listen not obviously to um, get away from what is a lovely day for all of you that are here but I think it's very much also with Jordan your goalkeeper in mind, isn't it today? 100%. Like, we knew that we had to win for him. Like, it was a big moment. The, night, the minute of silence, like, we all knew that we needed to win for him. It was such a big thing. He's such a lovely person as well. Like, if you've like, ever met him, he's so kind. Like, he just cares about the people around him. So it was nice to do that for him. It'd be nice to think he's watching, smiling somewhere, isn't yeah, it, today? 100%. 100% cheering us on. 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, what can you tell us about your teammates? Did everybody turn up today? Did everybody play as well as they can? Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> now, to be had fair. to think about it. Oh. Now, now, to be fair, to be fair to us, we have played better football before. But today is like maybe at the beginning it was a bit nervous and stuff like that. But as we built into the game, start playing one twos, we played a lot better together. I was going to say, like, obviously, I come in before the uh, before mm -hmm. the game, done the, the pre-match mm -hmm. interviews. The dressing room seemed bouncing, seemed mm -hmm. lively, it seemed like you were embracing mm -hmm. the day. It didn't tell there was any nerves at all. Mm -hmm. So when you come out. But the way he was playing, he was knocking the ball around mm -hmm. really well. Like, I felt like he was at home, really, even mm -hmm. at Wembley. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it is? We, na we naturally play football, but we were just taking a bit too long on it. I yeah. think we were trying to be too composed sometimes. Yeah. And then instead of playing the easy pass, we kind of went for the hard yeah. one. But, you know, it's, it's a great feeling, as yeah. we said. But just a word on your skipper, Joe. I think, is he the owner of the pub? Have I got that right? Yeah, he's the owner of the pub. Lovely. Man. I mean, it's just a coincidence, I presume, that he's skipper of the team. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's actually a leader, like, on and off the pitch. Like, he gets us together for nights out there. Like, literally, even now, we're going to go back to his pub and just have a good time. I was going to say that. More importantly, what are the celebrations going to be? We're going back to his pub. Champagne's going to be there. Come on over. <laughs> Come on down and enjoy. Love it. That sounds like a brilliant night. Yeah, Listen, get with your teammates. Enjoy the moment. Thank yeah. you very much for Thank stopping you. by. Well done. Well done. Well done. We'll bring Farrah in as well, who obviously. Uh, we'll have a smile on, I'm sure, but a little bit gutted that your team didn't didn't quite manage it, although they were very, very good second half. Yeah. A little bit gutted, yeah. I mean, it was the, the main thing, it was a competitive game. Yeah. I think both sets of teams enjoyed the occasion, which is what it's about, playing at Wembley. But as you mentioned there, the wishing was that a big opportunity in the second half. And, you know, it was put on the plate for him. He should have put it away and it had been a different game. But they still do win. I think on over the 90 minutes, the Bulls probably deserved it. Yeah. To be fair to Jordan Dashday, I christened Mbappe. It was a fantastic ball in and it just bobbled in the wrong moment and the strikers just yeah. had it under his foot. I mean, it's just one of those moments you'll have nightmares about. If it would have been a draw, you would have said it probably would have been an even result. I mean, the, the second goal killed the game off as, as it normally does. But uh, listen, they come out second half, gave, give it a go, give a good account of himself as well, which is what you want to do when you come to Wembley. Yeah, I think you mentioned that pass from Jordan in the second yeah. half was perfect. It just bubbled. Oh, he just got ahead of it, didn't he, the striker? And, and then he just mis completely miskicked. He didn't get his feet right, didn't set himself, and, and he missed a big opportunity. Whatever happens with the wishing well, the, their fans certainly enjoyed it up oh, there. We was, we was they lived them. every they kick, <laughs> didn't they? If they could have come down and kicked one or two, they would have done. They did, and I think it was the, the guy that actually owns the pub here. He just had, they just had a photo behind us, and he was just saying some words. He's proud of all the lads and what they've achieved and coming nice. this, this far. It, I think it took them, as I mentioned before the game, they got on the 4am train down, so it probably took them 45 minutes to actually get into the game. Yeah. I thought they were a good second half. No, you rightly pointed out earlier. It's going to take them 45 minutes to walk up the stairs. Well, I hope not, because that will <laughs> give Adam and Adam plenty of uh, chance to chat. But, um, yeah, the uh, the losers, so as you say, let's not forget their trains cancelled, started in the wee small hours of the morning to get yeah. down here from um, from Preston. So, yeah, obviously not the perfect day for the wishing well, but ball, Bull's Head, I think, were, um, were good value. OK, yeah, I think uh, more from Farrah and Steve in a moment, but with the, uh, the losers on their way up to collect their medals, let's face it, they are finalists. They played at Wembley. It's not like it's... Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't be a total disappointment as much as they came to win, I'm sure. Let me hand you back for the moment to uh, to Adam and Adam.
Thank you, Matt. Yeah, they should still take a lot of pride in this walk up the famous steps. I mean, so few people get to do this. It's hard to know how they'll feel about this day when they look back at him in years to come. I suppose in some ways you'll always remember a time that you got to do what so few other people have done is play on the pitch at Wembley, but then naturally you look back on it with a sense of regret as well. I think you will do, but I mean, we've been here time and time again, haven't we, on non-league finals day when we particularly, I think, do the Vars final, which again we see the lower reference of non-league football and when we were here only a couple of months ago when Littlehampton lost in that final there was an element of disappointment then afterwards you have to embrace it you've actually played at Wembley Stadium and you have to kind of think about the journey as you've gone on with it as, as a side individually and collectively and just think about it, what it means to the people around you the people that have supported you when you go to training and you're away from the family in these situations and yes it will be disappointing of course but Thing on reflection afterwards when you're going home on the bus or you're going home afterwards with your friends and family you think actually I've just played a game of football at Wembley that not too many people can say on a regular basis there's so many legends of the past have made this walk this famous walk up those legendary steps and they could say that they've done that and the winners on their way now and as Matt was mentioning a train being cancelled as well it's far from ideal they've had to come from the northwest well, they've got up in well, i know that a coach was picking some of the uh, players up at four in the morning to come make the journey from preston so it's been a really long day already for those representing the wishing well they can once the dust settles take a lot of pride in what they've achieved just reaching this final competition that has involved more than 60 teams from right across the country the heats at crystal palace and then at the etihad and the journey well it was all about getting to wembley it's what both the wishing well and the bulls heads have done but only one could win and it's the side from pratt's bottom in kent who have seen it through who will treasure this memory forever and it will be quite some party this evening no doubt the rooms will have been booked ahead of time in anticipation of a party in London. Before they go back to their day jobs, they can have that party, have that celebration, soak it all up. Well, they can, yeah, but they have the weekend off to recover before they go back on the Monday. <laughs> now they've shown a lot of class right throughout the wishing well, and they do so again here by standing to watch as the Bulls heads come forward to receive the trophy their captain Ben Long spots on the books of hearts in Scotland Ben Long also played at Barnet won a five-a-side World Cup representing England most capped England six-a-side player and it's just an illustration of the fact that there is a lot of talent within this group but this is the moment that they imagined. Jamie Leggett there as well, the manager, to help lift the trophy aloft. This is their day, one they will always remember. It is to be cherished for the Bulls' head. Adi Yemo and Bassett with the goals. They've done it on the big stage. And now they get to celebrate, and how good must that feel? That's what you always dream as, as a player growing up. Whatever level you want to you be at Wembley, lifting a trophy above your heads. That will remain long in the memory for you forever. As you mentioned, great players have not been able to grace Wembley Stadium, and great players have managed to walk up that famous steps to lift the trophy internationally and domestically. And this is a brilliant occasion and you have to soak it all in and really enjoy it and make the most of it and I think on reflection Adam I think the right team are lifting the trophy in terms of their performance and their quality finishes in that final third well, some pretty special memories have been made today for all connected with this side the Bulls head from Kent they are winners of the Pub Cup final 2022 Matt
Thanks. We'll be back uh, a little later for the women's game. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much uh, for watching. And, yeah, obviously, congratulations to the Bulls head. Worthy winners, I think that's fair to say, by two goals to nil, particularly in uh, memory of their keeper, Jordan Matura, who they lost in September. And I must make the point that uh, the Wishing Well players and staff were here to applaud the winners as they lifted the trophy up there. So really good spirit this game has been played in. Thanks for the moment to you two. Best of luck to your white ball team. You're, you're, OK, OK. <laughs> Not sure football always works that way, Farah, but we shall see. Thank you both for the moment. You can't go and celebrate with your team just yet. Um, but highlights before we go of what we've just seen here at Wembley with the Bullshead winning by two goals to nil.